Well, hello everybody, and uh, this is Louise Eddington with Utah for Bernie Sanders. And today I have with me Aubrey Lucas, who is running for House Representative in District, which one is it? 20? 37. 37. Yeah. 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 So I should really look this up before we start, <laughs> but, but, we're, but we're all friends. So um, really we're here today to um, find out why Aubrey is running and um, more about the issues she believes in. So if you Tell us why you're running, Aubrey. <laughs> so my journey started with a trip to uh, Ely, Nevada, um, where I canvassed with a, a bunch of uh, Bernie for Utah volunteers um, and just uh, was inspired by the, the message that I was spreading to an to the community and the people that I was with. And um, it just, the biggest point of why I was running was I was getting kind of, it made me sad to hear all the people say how their voice didn't matter, that they don't vote, that, you know, they kind of had become disenfranchised with the status quo in government and, you know, the, the corruption that they thought was happening. And, and I just, um, I used to be one of them, but I, listening to uh, Senator Sanders' message, um, was given hope that we could make a difference. I was seeing all of the impact that he was having on, on my generation. And so I figured, you know, it was time for us to step up and, and be a voice that, you know, other people could relate to and be part of the conversations that they were having. And, you know, it, it was a hard decision to make, and it's been quite a journey but I've inspired a lot of people and I feel like um, it's just the beginning for all of us. I think like Sanders also says is that, you know, we can't do it alone and we, we all have to continue this fight even after the, the presidential election's over. So it's, it's inspired me to make sure I continue. So awesome. Yeah, and I, I was, I was actually with you, I think. Yes, at the same. Well, I yeah. went as well, and and some of the infrastructure and things were terrible there, and some of the poverty was um, was quite bad. Um, so that kind of inspired me as well. I was like, all these people yeah. <laughs> they're just barely barely existing in some ways. So I talked to a lot of. Um, it's a an older population there. A lot of the younger generation has has moved. Mm -hmm. um, um, but the, the, a lot of the people I talked to were old, uh, veterans, Vietnam veterans, um, who uh, again were kind of left out. Like they felt like they weren't getting the, the benefits that they deserved and, um, were quite angry with the way that the government had treated them also. And mm -hmm. so, you know, that, that was kind of eye opening as well that, to see so many disenfranchised people oh it really wanted is. a voice it was it was a yeah a re, a, quite a, a eye-opener for sure uh, and to those listening um canvassing or door knocking is a great way to really get to understand <laughs> what people's concerns are yeah what need, yeah you know um so tell me a little bit about why 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 you think you would be able to beat a republican in uh, the general election um, so for me, I believe that the best chance I have going for me is that, you know, I am, am spreading a lot of the same message that, uh, Senator Sanders has kind of been spreading about, you know, campaign finance reform and, uh, climate change and how important it is that we start addressing that. And a lot of these same messages that I believe drew out all of the independent voters and the, the unaffiliated voters that have been coming out across the nation to, to vote. And I feel like if we can keep spreading that message and keep giving them um, voices that they can relate to and that aren't, you know, part, part of the establishment that, that I feel like we can, we can, we can keep them voting, keep them coming out. And I think that it would, it wouldn't have any problem in a primary, you know, getting that grassroots movement behind me. And uh, plus we, you, you know, as, as we've proved in Utah, we have a lot of Bernie supporters um, with the yeah. maximum one by 
and um, yes, you know, the Republicans, uh, Ted Cruz won, but we have a big um, core volunteer. <laughs> People yeah. are really fired up. So yeah. I think the progressive voice is being heard more and more. So tell me a little bit more about climate change. What, what kind of things would you like to see done? Um, for me, I mean, I have two young boys and I, their future and is the number one reason why climate change is so huge to me. Um, and again, we can't address climate change or do anything, make any real mm. dent in, in climate change issues until we can get, um, address campaign finance reforms. Um, especially in Utah, but, uh, you know, a lot of the bills are being influenced by special interest and you know, I, if we can get that part addressed and we can get those um, special interests and big corporation money out of campaigns, mm -hmm. I think that it ultimately comes, should come down to a bipartisan issue. I feel like, mm -hmm. you know, on both sides of the aisle, they both, we all breathe the same air. Mm -hmm. um, we should all be really concerned, especially in Utah with the quality of air that we have. And, and I know that there's a lot of communities um, and rural communities in Utah that are, um, their livelihoods depend on coal. And I get, and I understand, you know, the, the hardships that they're facing with us going to clean energy. But I feel like instead of using that as a reason to keep us on the, you know, the, the path of coal and, fossil fuels, we need to figure out ways to re-educate re those populations, retrain them in, in clean energy jobs, like I said, especially in those, those areas, so that we can stop using that as an excuse, which I feel that, that the lobbyists do. Uh -huh. um, they, they kind of exploit this idea of these coal company, these coal mining areas, which I understand, I feel for them, I, you know, I, 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 I do. I just feel like there's other options to, I, to get us away from that instead of using that as an excuse. So I think that that's my, would be my number one priority would be reaching out to the, you know, the, the, the smaller rural areas and, you know, giving incentives to companies to build manufacturing jobs of, you know, solar jobs, stuff like that in these areas and retraining them so that, we can give them an opportunity, you know, and, and mo help us move away from, from coal, but, and, and all fossil fuels really. But I, again, I feel like until campaign finance reforms addressed, we won't be able to get any of those, those things passed. So I agree. That, um, that's, that, that would, to me, it would be my number one issue. Um, and one, um, of, one of the things, um, one of the, um, things about the coalition that you're a member of you don't take any money from um corporations correct yes like yeah i am um, yes <laughs> i have never uh been one to ask for money in general but it does cost money to run campaigns and um i have taken a pledge to not take any corporate money um i definitely believe that government should be of the people for the people i feel like Pub, you know, people-funded campaigns have been proven to be successful. I mean, Senator Sanders has proven that. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that it's needed. Um, so yeah, I am just asking for, you know, donations from my community and my the people. The people. I don't think we need to involve big corporations. It, I agree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, just while we're on, you've got two children. So education. What do you? Uh think of education in Utah? <laughs> um, education in Utah, I mean, this, um, the fact that we are the very last in the nation on uh, funding oh, yeah. um, is horrific. And this excuse that we do more with less is not acceptable to me. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that it's a hard, it's a hard thing to address. And I understand that there, the statistics of that we have a, uh, higher population in, in school than other states that affect that number. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we can do better. I think we need to do better. I think that mm -hmm. uh, funding, I think, is huge. I think that we also need to rethink some of the curriculum that we're teaching our kids in high school. I think we need to prepare them better for life outside of 
I, you know, after they graduate, I think giving them more opportunities to learn trades and skills and earn certificates in high school yeah. um, would help those that couldn't, you know, maybe can't afford the cost of college, mm-hmm. which is go- currently going up, um, which I, I needs to be addressed as well. I mean, I would love to see free free higher education. Um, Public colleges. And, and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but until then, I think we need to address the kids now in high school and the skills we're teaching them now so that until we can address higher education and making that more affordable, that we're giving them all the same opportunities and the the best chance to succeed. Um, I I mean, I think, I think that's super important. I think they need to rethink how we're, we're teaching them in high school. And also, I'm a big fan also of bringing that teaching in the whole child, teaching the whole child rather than just focusing on maths, more, more maths, more maths, more maths. Yes, um, absolutely. Because yeah. art, and, art and music is proven, isn't it, to help math skills and everything and wholesome and also recess. <laughs> That's a big one for me. I think. Yes, recess. Yes, please get my kids outside. Yes. You know, get them, get them active, obviously mm. clean up the air and then yes. let them go outside, but. But keep them active, yeah, I think, and arts, and, you know, we're cutting, again, because we're the least funded, they start cutting, you know, arts and music and stuff like that, and I think it, it's sad, I think, that those things are super important in, in their in growth, and it teaches, I, I have played the piano my whole life, and um, my kids love art, I would hate the fact that they would miss out on opportunities to learn, and, and to learn those, you know, those that I think it's taught me to be a better adult. Mm. Um, so, so yeah, I think we need to do again more to bring back those things as well. For sure. So how can people find you? You have a Facebook page, I, I think. Yeah, I do. I have a Facebook page. It's uh, Aubrey Lucas for House District uh, 37. Um, oh. It's actually Aubrey Hope Yaina Lucas <laughs> um, for House District 37. Um, and I will don't worry, about, don't worry about the spelling. You can just type in Aubrey Lucas; it'll come up. Um, we're, I'm also spotlighted on uh, upcutah.com, mm-hmm. um, and I did also just start a GoFundMe page for Aubrey uh, Lucas for House District 37 as well. Um, I'm just trying to hopefully prove that even on a state level that we can, you know, fund have people funded campaigns. So, mm-hmm. and I'll um, post I'll post all those links below the video. Perfect. Okay, um, thanks. So, well, unless you've got anything else to tell the viewers, I think um, we're done. No, the only thing I would say is just to keep this momentum going. Don't stop after November. Make sure that you stay involved in your communities and and know the representatives that are elected to represent you and what the bills are that they're passing. It's actually, they don't make it super easy to find online, but they it is um, all online. So... Mm-hmm. You know, stay involved. Don't sit back and be, you know, the person that's complaining about things and not okay. doing anything about it. So. Totally agree. This is the start of yeah. a movement. It's not, it's not just about you or just about me. It's about yeah. all of us. So. It's about all of us. Absolutely. Yeah. All of us. So. Well, thank you. Louis. Great to yeah. meet you. you. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.